Um, and can luxury travel be sustainable? And what are your organizations individually doing to promote sustainable travel? And also works for the travel agencies on the panel because you are selling sustainable travel. Uh, let's start, um, uh, who should I start with? Let's start with Leah. Sorry. Because you, Leah, her, you cater to a younger set uh, of travelers, rich millennials. Um, boy, who's a rich millennial in the audience? Uh, there we go. All right, <laughs> client for you, right there. We like uh, to say well off. <laughs> <laughs> well off. Um, how how are you selling this concept of sustainable travel and combining it with upscale travel? Sure, absolutely. So I think there's a few points to this question. Um, us as an agency and, and individuals at our company find it very important to talk the talk. So um, first and foremost, last year we started working with uh, small and under the radar charities that we pair with trips that we see people taking. So a good example is we started working with a company called um, baby grant, which actually gives grants to families who cannot afford IVF. So we partnered with them and anyone who books a baby moon, we give a percentage of the profits back to, to um, that charity. Um, and we promote it and so people, not only our clients, potential clients see it, but also the hotels that we partner with also promote it. So it's a really great way to show that we're giving back and we're supportive um, about different charities. Um, we also uh, definitely talk about the hotels and the brands that are supporting sustainability. Um, so hotels like Six Senses, um, Bulgari, um, in different capacities, uh, lots of uh, individual hotels, like a beautiful hotel in Fiji called Lufala. They're actually 86% self-sustainable on the island. So things like that we do bring up to clients because more and more and more they not only want to know about it, but they want to feel good about where they're staying and feel that they are connecting and giving back. We have a lot of high profile clients that as of last year specifically will ask no plastic to be seen even if the hotel does offer it. Um, so no plastic water bottles, no plastic straws. Um, so really trying to do their part um, to make sure that they are um, staying with the sustainability um, thought process. Um, we also are constantly working with clients on, on their trips to try to integrate local um, you know, experiences that give back. So highlighting those when we're talking about the activities that they're doing and making sure they know where the profits of that organization are going, what they're doing, why it's important, um, and more and more uh, people really enjoy that. They, they want that to be a part of their experiences. So um, yeah. all in all, yeah. yeah. Let's let's jump to Becky because uh, Becky has a, mm -hmm. a, a is a very large agency. Uh, yes. And how, how are you? Uh, first of all, are your clients interested in booking sustainable travel on the upscale side? And how are you doing that with them? We don't find that clients are asking about booking sustainable properties or cruise lines, but they're interested in it. Um, they, they come back from their trip and they are very pleased when they see when companies are, are in, you know, enforcing sustainable habits. Uh, but you know, I really think as the younger generation, uh, this is more of a focus. It's going to be more for your Gen Y um, those type of, of clients who are going to be really asking for this. But um, every company that we work with now um, has some kind of sustainable plan that they're enforcing. Some are doing it quicker than others. So I think as time goes, it will become more of a requested item versus I'm pleased to see it happening. So. No. No, great. Now let's uh, jump. Uh, well, I, I shall go uh, to Albert because uh, I know uh, Virtuoso has been very active. We'll hear more in our keynote panel from Matthew Upchurch uh, in the sustainability area. But how is how are you approaching that? Wow, I, with this microphone in front, I feel like I'm in the congressional hearings. Good morning. <laughs> I plead a fifth. Um, there will be no witnesses. So. <laughs> no transcript will be available at the end of the meeting. Um, it is a very, sustainability is an extremely important factor in terms of how we, virtuoso the network, is approaching our business. Uh, James mentioned Matthew, our CEO. Uh, Matthew and his wife, Jessica, 
have been very passionate about this cause or this purpose for the last 15 years. And for the most part, it's also how we look at the partners we work with. It's about the practices they share. But more importantly, it's not about virtuoso creating a new standard of what sustainability should be or be giving back. Because I mentioned earlier, we work with about 2,000 partners around the world, and each and every one of them has a story to tell, a good practice to, to share. And that's what we, we do, is actually we take that content that's given to us by our partners, provide that in a nice, easy format to be able to distribute that across the 22,000 advisors, because that helps them be armed when their clients come to them saying, I want to travel, but I need to make sure that I'm saving whatever it may be or helping whatever it may be. And that's important. We're able to share those stories around the world. Mm -hmm. So that is one aspect of it. And even we throw our own big events, as some of you may know, <laughs> chuckle on the side. Um, it's also how we ourselves are held accountable, where we source the food that's being served at these events. Because the largest, you know, a little factoid I learned um, six months ago was the largest polluter, I guess, or contributor to this, to global warming as well, is food waste. That's true. Right? It's yeah. more than uh, air travel and all that. So how we are responsible in terms of sourcing the food that we get when we serve these big banquets. Yeah, and they're also now doing carbon offsets of meetings and things like that and increasingly. Yeah. Uh, let's turn to the couple of, oh, uh, I want to do the suppliers. You're right, you, you, may, you may speak. Thank you, James. Please, you know, what is Taup yeah, doing? I, I think it's really important to, to note that, you know, sustainability has more to do, more than just carbon and, and plastic. You know, there's, there's also... There's plastic bottles here. I don't know, yeah. guys. I don't know. <laughs> I think we're, we're, we're falling down on the job. But, you know, I often talk to uh, advisors about destinations with an expiration date. And what I mean is that we have this real um, responsibility to, to educate our travelers so that they don't come in and, you know, you've heard the word over tourism, that they don't come in and change a culture. We need to preserve cultures. And I remember years ago when we were one of the first companies to go into Mexico's Copper Canyon, there was no infrastructure. We had to actually build the infrastructure. We partnered with a company and built the Sierra Madre Express, our own train, because the only way to access Copper's Canyon, Copper Canyon back then was with the Mexican Railway, and so hardly anybody went. And when we first started going into the area, there was an indigenous group of people called the Tarahumara Indians, and many of them had never um, actually seen white skin. And once we blazed the trail into Mexico's Copper Canyon, many followed, and before long, the Tarahumaras went from their native garb to wearing Yankees baseball caps and Adidas shirts. And, you know, that's just plain wrong. So we need to make sure that we're responsible and teach people that when they, when they visit an area, it's not just that they, they don't leave a, a carbon footprint, but they also make sure that uh, they don't leave anything um, that's going to damage or destroy the culture. Mm -hmm. And that way, you know, we're going to be able to preserve these destinations um, you know, long beyond uh, the people on this panel. So yeah. And let's, really let's go to Shannon, because Shannon, you have a unique proposition because you have more than 500 some members around the world. How do you promote sustainable travel with them? And, and is it more they're coming to you and saying, we want sustainable programs? Are you going to them and saying, look, this is the way you, we think you should do it? Yeah, I think it's a great question. And just building, I think, on what Rick was saying, for us, sustainable travel is, is much more, it's about responsible travel. And it extends beyond, you know, obviously um, we want to ensure that, that we're reducing plastic, we're re reducing our carbon footprint, we're doing all of those things to preserve the environment 100%. Um, but we're also very focused on exactly what Rick was saying. Because many of our hotels, um, in many cases, are the um, icons of the destination. They have, the destination has grown up around them or they are really a part of the fabric of that destination. Um, we're very focused on conservation and preservation of the cultures um, in which our, our uh, hotels um, live. And, and I think this is something that's intimately personal to many of our hoteliers because they too are from mostly from those destinations. And so um, this idea that it's more than simply eliminating, and we must do this, don't get me wrong, but eliminating the plastic um, and doing the things that we need to be responsible global citizens, we're really focused on this idea of responsible travel and, and uh, focus on conservation and preservation of the cultures and societies in which we operate. 
Great, great answer. Uh, and then Naveen, you'll, you'll close it up. I promise to be, get you first the next question. <laughs> no uh, worries, uh, no worries. But I'm sure there, because Naveen is actually the only uh, cruise representative on the panel, and uh, that's a big topic now in cruising today, especially in expedition cruising. It is a big topic in cruising, and um, I think one of the ways to look at it is cruise lines represent 3% of all global marine traffic. And yet, they invariably become the poster child for all things that are not sustainable, which is rather unfair um, for the industry as a whole, because cruise lines do an enormous amount. Speaking of the human element and communities, cruise lines did a great deal once the hurricanes struck closer to home in the Bahamas and even in Puerto Rico. They're already contributing to the fires and restoration in Australia. Our company in particular has a couple of uh, officers on staff, shore base. This is not just on board the ships, whose sole responsibility is to change the habits of all of us within the company. And it goes far beyond single-use plastics and socks and knocks, uh, which is sulfur dioxide and uh, nitrogen-based gases, etc., and carbon footprints, etc., because you can buy your way out of carbon footprints footprints by just having a huge wallet. But there are other aspects to all of this that become very important. Our company is headed by and founded by globally a sailor. The relationship with sustainability is symbiotic. It is not a corporate initiative. It's not a choice. And it's not a choice not just for us, but for all of us over here. And that's how seriously we take it. So where do you take it the next step? You choose your suppliers very carefully. You make sure that better than two-thirds of all your supply chain for food, which Albert just mentioned as a huge waste in the, uh, in, in, through the lens of sustainability, is locally sourced, because you will then source what you require and need and can use and sustain the local community. So there is that human element of it. There are a lot of different ways in which all of this is evolving well beyond the, society, the science and into the community. And the cruise lines are continuously innovating around all of this. Yeah, well, I know it's interesting that you would think that luxury might be the last place that would be focused uh, and, and lead the way in sustainability, but I think it is, actually. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and of all the travel segments and all the different... And indeed, uh, Matthew Upchurch, when he first started focusing on this, said to me and said to this, I think the only way that we're going to get real sustainable travel is when it's profitable. Uh, sadly, that's the case. And it can be profitable. That's the problem. It can be very profitable. 